Friday, March 6, 2009, 36-year-old Nancy Moyer vanishes from her home into 90 Washington. Investigators try to piece together what little they know. It appears Nancy hadn't planned to be gone for long. The front door of her home has been left ajar, and nothing inside has been disturbed. Only her brown coat is missing. Did Nancy leave with someone, expecting to return a short time later? You know, when someone disappears, usually their vehicle is parked somewhere away, away from the residence or something. But with Nancy's case, her car is right in her front driveway. Her keys are in her purse inside the house. Her identification, you know, her wallet, everything's inside the house. If Nancy did leave willingly with someone, it had to have been someone she felt comfortable around. Investigators asked the patrol officer who was running radar near her house that night to take a polygraph test. He passes. Now, detectives must expand their search for other potential suspects. There was a lot of tips coming in from family members, coworkers, friends, um, things that, you know, different people that they thought we should be interested in or we should talk to. Nancy's next door neighbor claims he heard something the night she disappeared. Sometime around midnight, he thought he heard a woman's voice say, hurry up, and a car door shutting. He was awoken by the noise and then went back to sleep. Investigators speak to Nancy's colleagues at the Department of Ecology, who say she'd recently taken an interest in a coworker, Aaron Huntley. Aaron Huntley's a very cute kid, young man. One of these guys that attract, attracts women like you wouldn't believe. They were all over him. I had heard that he had been involved. There was actually thought that maybe she had stronger feelings than he did at the time. Aaron Huntley, Nancy, I would say that they had a relationship. However, Aaron claims Nancy's feelings were not reciprocated. Aaron Huntley, yeah, admittedly had a romantic relationship with her prior to her disappearance. Aaron admits it, and that, that's been known since the beginning of the investigation. They also did verify his alibi that he was with a girlfriend, a new, a new girlfriend, that weekend. Another coworker of Nancy's, a man named Jim, also attracts the attention of investigators. He was fascinated with Nancy. He took a liking to her. Jim tells investigators that he and Nancy had planned to get together on the night of her disappearance. He had called her house. She didn't answer, called multiple times. She didn't show up. So he himself went to the house to check on her, and he claimed that he found it in the same condition that Bill found it, with the front door wide open and the TV on and nobody answering the door. He walks in calling out for Nancy, and then he eventually leaves and chooses to leave the door in the condition that it was. He doesn't shut it, doesn't close it. Though his story certainly raises eyebrows, Thurston County investigators find nothing to link Jim to Nancy's disappearance. And as hope dims for her safe return, Nancy's grandparents offer a reward for any information about the case. Her uh, grandparents had offered $100,000, and they said after two weeks, $100,000 had generated zero leads, and that actually scared them. I, I remember Detective Haller told me, he goes, that's bad. It was actually about three months that it set in that she wasn't coming back. I had a breakdown on the playground uh, in front of my best friend, and I was freaking out and she told me it'd be okay but I knew that I, I had my mindset she's not coming back now. In August 2010, a year after Nancy's disappearance, Tanino is rocked by news of a horrifying murder. The killer is Bernard Howell, a local meat salesman. He grabbed a, a woman that was walking along a trail and murdered her and was caught with her body in his truck. People assumed that Bernard Howell probably had something to do with Nancy Moyer's disappearance. This is huge. You have someone in Thurston County who is convicted of murdering a woman who's a stranger to him, and they have evidence linking him directly to Nancy, linking him to going to her residence. He sold meat in Tonino out of the back of a truck 
and some of the meat that he sold was found in Nancy Moyer's freezer when they had done the search warrant back in 2009 on her house. Nancy's daughter tells investigators she remembers seeing him at her mother's house. My mom bought some meat from him, some chicken, shrimp, whatever. He was kind of awkward, but he seemed normal to me. Howell is convicted and sentenced to 26 years in prison for the Tonino murder, but he denies having anything to do with Nancy's disappearance. And once again, her case goes cold. Five more years pass while detectives do what they can to push the case forward. It's around the five-year mark you open up more availability of resources, whether that be the federal government or even the state level, um, just because it's now considered a homicide case instead of a missing person case. In 2019, Detective Mickey Hamilton takes over Nancy's case. He turns his attention to the items collected from her house and car. From Nancy's house, in the original case, we recovered her bedding. We took some wine glasses for DNA testing, some cigarette butts, clothing, some women's clothing, and her purse and personal items. But there's a problem. I went downstairs to our evidence section and I said, hey, the Nancy Moyer stuff, has it been sent off for DNA? And they said, oh yeah, I'm sure all that stuff went up years ago. And they started looking through their records and couldn't find any record of it going for DNA either. It turns out none of the evidence is sent out to be analyzed for DNA until 2019, 10 years after Nancy's disappearance. After a decade of waiting, her family has little hope that Nancy's case will ever be solved. Then, in the summer of 2019, Nancy Moyer's case leaps back into the headlines. Police say they receive a 911 call from a man who lives just down the street from where Nancy and Bill raised their family. But he called 911 and said that he would like to confess to a murder. Detective said Eric Roberts told them he accidentally strangled Nancy Moyer during sex and then suggested that he buried her remains on his property. 10 years after the disappearance of Nancy Moyer, has her killer finally emerged from the shadows? For 10 years, family and friends of Nancy Moyer are haunted by questions surrounding her unexplained disappearance. Then, in 2019, a possible answer arises out of the blue. He called 911 in the evening and said that he would like to confess to a murder. The caller is a local man named Eric Roberts. Investigators soon learn Eric is the uncle of a man Nancy once dated, her co-worker, Aaron Huntley. Eric Roberts lived just a few houses down from their house, and then they both worked together at the Department of Ecology, so they were co-workers as well. I was shocked. I was shocked. when Once I found out that Eric had confessed, I was completely shocked that he had actually confessed to doing it. Nancy's friend, Beth Poston, is also stunned by Robert's confession. She remembers meeting him during one of her volunteer searches. This man showed up. He kind of stood around and he was asking me all kinds of questions. Where have we searched? Why did we search there? What were we doing? It just struck me as being very odd. Searchers have spent the last two days looking for clues. And while the sheriff says they found some potential evidence, they have not found Moyer's remains. Frustrating investigators, Roberts doesn't explicitly tell them where they can find Nancy's body. He only hints that he burned it in an outdoor fire pit behind his home. However, he does give detectives a disturbing account of how Nancy died. It happened during a sexual encounter. That was the gist of their relationship. There was nothing more. It was just a sexual relationship. And he had used a scarf to choke her. And he didn't realize that she had passed away until some time had passed because she wasn't breathing. The confession rips open wounds that have never fully healed for Nancy's family and friends. I really think this is the guy. I don't see a reason anyone confesses something like that um, unless they did it. Finally, 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 and this family's gonna have some closure and these little girls are gonna know what happened to their mom. It's horrible, but at least they're gonna know. When I found out there was a break in the case, oh, I cried, I cried a lot. I thought it was over, I, I really did. But a day later, in a stunning reversal, 
Roberts recants his confession.